This thing can get quick. Hey guys, check this out. We are here with the new Fiat 500e. This is the La Prima, which is the only trim you can get in Australia, but it's pretty cheap. 52,000 500 before on-road cost for an EV, at least a premium-ish EV, that's quite good. But there are some things about this car that I don't particularly love, while other things are amazing about this thing. It's certainly a big step up from the last Fiat 500, which came out in 2007, and by the way, is still being produced at the same time. So a little bit confused there. It's gonna become like the Land Cruiser 79 series of cars, I reckon. But anyway, today we're talking about this, so we'll go through an exterior tour of the new Fiat 500e, how it's grown in every dimension. We're also gonna check out the practicality and interior because there are so many cool things about the interior. Then we're gonna take this thing for a drive, which is a little bit of a mixed bag, but I won't spoil it for you now. And then I'm gonna end on my final thoughts. Should you buy the Fiat 500e, especially because there are cheap, Chinese competitor brands like the MG4 and the GWM Aura, which are already out. So let's get into it. Thank you to today's video sponsor, Wipertech. Wipertech sell high quality and durable wiper blades delivered straight to your door. Designed for all Aussie conditions, these blades fight rust, reduce wind lift, and glide smoothly thanks to their aerodynamic design and Teflon embedded rubber. They're easy to install, offer a perfect fit guarantee and backed by a full 12 month warranty. Click the link below and use code CARSOURCE15 during checkout to get 15% off your order plus free express shipping. Thanks to Wipertech for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so coming to the exterior now of the Fiat 500e and look, I'm pretty partial to small cars as you guys know, but this is a really, really good look looking car. It's actually bigger in pretty much every way versus the 2007 500 that's still on sale today. And actually I'll put those stats up on the screen now so you can see how much bigger it is. It's not hugely, but it's definitely bigger. It's actually built on an entirely different platform versus the Fiat 500 and it's going to be exclusive just for Fiat and there might be a Fiat 600e coming soon as well. So let me know in the comment section if you want us to review that, if that comes. But the looks of this thing are very classic Fiat 500. You're not going to miss that this thing is a Fiat 500. I really love these headlights here. The cool circular design that eats into the top of the bonnet. You've also got more DRLs here. You've got these two chrome strips and the Fiat 500 badge. That's also your radar because this thing does have level two autonomous driving. The only thing is though, it was rated at a four star ANCAP safety rating. Take that as you will. That was taken from NCAP. Down the bottom, you have an open area here and that's to go into your radiators more for the air con than anything else because this thing needs to have the best rag coefficient as possible and it is quite an efficient EV although not the best as you will see when we're on the roads and actually this is pretty impressive so the aircon is rearing at the moment but it does have gas struts which I just love because that's attention to detail the thing I don't love is there's no storage under here um, and as you'll see at the back it's really not the best uh, in terms of its boot space but yeah look I guess it's a small EV, what do you expect? Oh, apart from the paint, you can only get this in colorful paints. They've killed off the gray paints because apparently those are too dull. I kind of love that. Let's check out the side. Okay, so coming to the side, again, unmistakably, this thing is a Fiat 500. You've got these uh, pretty cool 17 inch wheels here. They are wrapped in eco tires though. There isn't much spacing between the wheel and the body. And as you'll see, it's not the most comfortable car I've ever driven, but it does have quite a lot of aero here. Again, as you can see on these wheel caps, it's gonna be probably quite annoying to clean. I love this center belt line here, like this metal, I don't know, just really harks back to the original Fiat 500. You've also got these like little turning signals here that almost look like aero. Don't know, maybe, that, maybe that's a harken back to the previous one. You've got your standard mirror caps here with no 360 camera, unfortunately, though, as I said, for an EV, this is actually pretty good value. You do have these fixed door handles here with keyless entry and go. Again, more chrome up here. And you'll notice that the door is like the entire length of the car. And you get a lot of glass on the inside too, including the glass roof. So it's very airy on the inside, which is something I have loved driving this thing around today. You've got the La Prima. I'm guessing that's how you say it in, in, in Italy with a 500E badge there. And I love how they've integrated the E into the 500 badge. If you've watched our Fiat Abarth review, you'll really uh, appreciate some of the quality upgrades of the new 500E versus the previous generation 500. 
100. And also here is your charging. It's actually a pretty decent charging situation. Again, I'll put that up on the screen now for those who are interested. Let's check out the bum. Okay, so coming to the bum now of the Fiat 500e. Again, it is, uh, well, very reminiscent of every other Fiat 500, which I think is a good thing. I love the Fiat badging there because I've actually gone back to the older style of font. You have the 500 badge there, again, with the E inside of it. The tail lights, they look so similar, but now they're LED and they just look a lot more smart. Up top, you got a little roof spoiler there too. And then down the bottom, no fake exhaust. Thankfully, this isn't the Abarth, which will be coming with that fake exhaust sound system. And let me know in the comment section if you want us to review that. I certainly can't wait. Now, let's talk about bum space. So it is a little bit better than before because of the bigger platform. So it's a decent usable space, even though it is a lot of it cut in. You can also drop the rear seats as well and get even more room. And then underneath the floor, you have uh, some charging cables there too. But overall, it's pretty decent, but don't expect a lot from a Fiat 500, let's be honest. Let's check out the interior. Okay, so coming into the interior now of the Fiat 500e, it is a huge departure away from the previous 500 in a lot of really good ways. So there are some of the things where like you sit quite high up. So I'm five foot 11 and this is a seat at its lowest um, and my head is still like near the roof, but it's not in the roof, which is literally what happened in the Fiat 500. Uh, you've also got other things like, look at this you have a telescoping adjustment so you can finally get it into a good position. The previous 500, frankly, an ergonomic nightmare. If you want to learn more about that, you have to watch our bath review. You've also got some very EV things like, for example, there's no door handle. You press a button. Oh, and it, uh, it opens up like that. There is an emergency release down here as well. So if the battery dies, you don't you know get stuck in here. Quality of the materials as well is pretty good. At this price point for an EV, it's probably at the lower end of where I would like it to be because there's still scratchy materials in a lot of places, but at least the places that you touch is actually really good. Now, of course, because this is an EV and everything is eco-focused, this is eco leather, which means man-made. Um, you've also got a two-spoke steering wheel design, which does look admittedly very, very cool. Same as these seats, they're actually really, really nice. They've got Fiat kind of embroidered into them, which is a pretty cool look. And I really like the uh, lightness of this interior, not to mention, you get this nice little non-moving sunroof. We don't get the convertible in Australia. Hopefully that will come. I don't know, it kind of seems like we will be getting that, which is exciting. Tech in here is fantastic. You have a massive 10.25 inch display that's running Android Automotive. It's super responsive. It just works really well with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You get a wireless charger here with the Torino landscape. It's a little Easter egg. You've also got a made in Torino and an old Fiat 500 from 1957, apparently, inside of this grab hand here. The digital instrument cluster up in front of you is pretty decent. It's actually quite responsive and it does show you plenty of information. Again, a huge, huge step up from what you used to get in previous Fiat 500s, which um, not the best. Uh, here you have a pretty massive glove box for a EV. Also, if you're wondering where your cup holders are, you've got a little pull down here and that reveals a cup holder. You also, if you pull back this little area here, then you get another deep cup holder in there. Also got a USB-C port and a USB-A port with another USB-A port up there. Also a 12 volt socket. So yeah, you're not gonna be wanting for charging your devices in here, that's for sure. In terms of quality, it's actually really decent. You know, you bang around, nothing's really rattling, squeaking. You open the door, you close it. It sounds pretty damn solid as well. Center armrest is nice and soft and it does reveal quite a bit of storage in there too. With a flat area here, by the way, because it's an EV, it doesn't have a transmission tunnel. So it's actually a really good use of space. Again, way, way better than Fiat 500s are before, but frankly, that was such a low bar that it's not that much of an achievement. Also, door bins are a pretty decent size. You've got like two little pockets to them. The other thing is back seats. It's still definitely not uh, the best story at five foot 11. Uh, like I really struggle to fit back there. It's pretty much unusable, but for kids, or if you really need dicky seats in the back, you need to get some adults in there. You can do it, but you're gonna be compromising uh, by pulling this seat quite a bit of the way forward. Also, if you wanna change your drive modes, you click down here and your volume button is there too, along with your parking brake. And thankfully you still get your air conditioning controls here as well as your drive selector there too. So overall, it's a really good package, way better than before. But does it feel 52,000 Australian dollars before on roads? Probably not, if I'm being totally honest, but let's see how this thing drives.
Okay, so driving the Fiat 500e, we're in normal mode. Let's give it some sauce. Look, this thing is hugely better than it was before, but let's be honest, that was quite a low uh, benchmark. <laughs> uh, ergonomically, this thing is such a step up. It's actually a very comfortable EV to ride around with a bit of a caveat. So the primary ride, you know, the ride that you're generally gonna experience is really good. As soon as you start to give it a bit of sauce and the handling itself as well is also surprisingly very good. I mean, probably shouldn't be surprised. The battery is down in the floor. It's when you're at places like this where there are big bumps, that's when you start to notice that the secondary ride of this thing is not the best. You start to get thrown around a little bit. Um, it's definitely more comfort tuned. And even though this thing doesn't weigh very much, 1290 kilograms, yeah, look, it's, um, I wouldn't say it's the best. So the future of the Fiat brand is 100% electric that is what they told us so obviously this thing is a full ev it puts out 87 kilowatt of power 220 newton meters of torque which doesn't sound great but as i said it's not very heavy so it's okay really when you put your foot down you do feel that 220 newton meters of instant torque and it doesn't feel slow at all it really doesn't and out on the back roads you can definitely have a bit of fun however <laughs> it only has a 42 kilowatt hour battery so quite a small battery. And even though the claimed range is over 300 kilometers WLTP standard, yeah, closer to 250 is what we've been experiencing today. In fact, if we go through this screen here, which is very good, the average consumption at 15.3, this thing is actually very fuel efficient or EV efficient, but you do start to notice that the range really is not the best. And when you compare it to something that we've recently reviewed, the GWM Aura, that thing does get better range for quite a bit cheaper than this car drive away. So it's hard. It's a very tough space that this thing is playing in. I will say though, as we give this thing some source, the traction control has been really well tuned. It's not like invasive in any way. And this thing does keep traction very well. Obviously it doesn't have a huge amount of power and it's really at these speeds, let's say we're at 60, we want to speed up a little bit. That's when this thing really starts to slow down. But around town, this thing is perfect for that. It feels super zippy, and the fact that it's so small, it's a great city car. In fact, I would say it's a great second car. Don't know if I'd be buying this one as my primary though. Honestly, just because of the range and practicality of this thing being a smaller car, it's, it's hard to see in that sense, but it's very like the Mini Electric in another sense, which is that it's fun, it's tossable, and it's uh, comfortable enough. It does have a couple of different driving modes, but it's essentially uh, normal, which we're in now. We then have range, which is like eco, and then we have Sherpa, <laughs> which uh, is trying to be a throwback to like Sherpa era, where you will always find your way home. So you put it in that, it maximizes your range, but it turns off the air conditioner. And even if you put it back into range, it doesn't turn it back on. You have to do it manually. I don't know, a bit silly. And then when you do that, you really notice that it cuts power quite significantly. And then it turns on regen braking because weirdly, if you're in normal, it will just roll, which is technically a better way to keep range apparently. But of course, as you brake, you can see here, our charge meter goes up and we get more power. Excuse me while I give it a bit more sauce. Oh, I really felt the dog there. The other thing as well is that yes, it handles very well, but the steering like tune itself, it definitely doesn't have a very quick ratio. It feels quite light. Um, and if I'm being totally honest, uh, a little bit soulless in a way. Turning circle is amazing though, <laughs> very, very good. And again, that instant torque is absolutely fantastic. I just think it's got a few things that are potentially holding it back. And when you have now such stiff, much, much cheaper competition from Chinese brands. And did I mention this thing only comes with a three year warranty, which I don't think is very okay anymore. I think we really need five years. I don't know, for me, that's the, the thing that's really holding it back. I think Fiat, if you're listening to this, and I know you are, please, please release this thing with a five year warranty because it shows the consumer, you know, my viewers, that you stand by the quality of your product. And speaking to you, I know you do, so just, you know, put in, put in a writing, just do that. I will say though, huge, huge upgrade from uh, the Fiat 500. So if you like the looks of the Fiat 500 and you want an EV, you're gonna be pleasantly surprised by this if you've driven that. Let's give it one more bit of sauce. <laughs>
can be a lot of fun. Okay, so now we're going to launch it, specialist timing gear. Let's put our foot on the brake and go. It's like decent, it's decent. Okay, zero to 100 in nine seconds flat. Um, look, is it the best thing out there? No. All right, let's get into our final thoughts. Okay, so final thoughts on the Fiat 500e. I think it has a lot going for it. I think its price point is actually pretty good, especially for a full EV, but it definitely does have some deficiencies. I think the biggest one for me, and it can be so easily changed, is that it comes with a three-year warranty and 150,000 kilometers, which is just not enough in today's day. It just kind of makes you think, you know, why, why aren't they backing it more? But I'll leave that with you guys. You can let me know what you think down in the comment section just below that like button and subscribe to the channel if you are new. We'd love to have you around. Ciao for now.